seated. Blessed be the name of the Lord God for his blessings. Greet you all once again in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome you once again to Atlanta Christian Assembly. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, those of you who are here in person. And those of you who are watching us through live stream, thank you again for all the uh, beautiful comments that you send us now and then. It's beautiful to know that you are attending the services. Some of you are not able to attend uh, when we are having a live service, but uh, whenever you get time, you are attending and you're sending us uh, comments. We thank God for the blessings that God has given us, even in this uh, stage and in this condition where the world is going through so much that we cannot even meet each other. We cannot shake hands many times, cannot hug. And um, I was talking to someone last uh, um, evening or two days earlier, and I said, I'm a person who calls myself to be a big hugger. I want to hug everyone. But there are times that you cannot do. Your heart yearns to hug people, but it's okay. Nothing is going to destroy you. God is the one who is handling us, and his love is sufficient. Many times, that elbow, uh, whatever you call it, high five, or whatever way you are waving and waving your hugs and sending emojis, that is also good. God knows our heart. And this is a time for us to know that what we do is not by the physical ways that we do, but from our heart when we love someone, that prayer goes out and it is always a blessing. Amen? So we thank God for everything. In every situation, we want, we want to be thankful as the Word of God says. And we thank God for the opportunities that He gives us. I'm finding, that, and the reports are telling us also, more attendance in churches is happening because of the situation that we are going through. Not in person probably, but more people are listening to the Word of God. And we are thankful for every evil situation He will turn into. Good. Amen. And that's what brings us to that message that we were meditating a couple months back. All things work together for good to those that love the Lord. Even in this, we are thankful. We always, I want to be very careful about some words. I don't want to be thankful for something, but in that situation, I want to be thankful to the Lord because He will enable us to be strong in Him and in the power of His might. But I thank you, Dr. Benu, for speaking to us from Psalm 37. Yes, do not fret when the evildoer prospers. It's very easy. Uh, for some time you can say, okay, it's okay. We are doing, we are in the Lord. We can be okay. But after a certain time, after a number of years, you think suddenly that after all these years and after all that I have done, we suddenly think that I have done, right? And that's what God's word reminds us, reminded us this morning, that it is not what we have done. It is the grace of God that he enabled us to do and be in that situation. We need to be thankful and our lives need to be a blessing. And that song that followed that, the first song that we sang, make me an offering. Would that be our prayer? It is a beautiful prayer. May Lord make me an offering. Yes, even though my heart yearns to do whatever the other people are doing. And I want to be on top of that mountain also. But I simply want to surrender myself and say, Lord, make me an instrument. And make me an offering for your glory and your glory alone. As we are meditating, this will be the, probably the concluding message on this uh, series. Merciful God or God of mercy. We have been meditating on that. And it's a very short series. I think that we, uh, this, there were only two couple, couple messages on that and then following this is the concluding message probably and I always say there is no conclusion of God's message of uh, the word of God because there is you cannot uh, you cannot summarize everything in just two three messages or maybe even one year you can take and still cannot summarize it because there is so much to talk about this wonderful and awesome God and when I look at Isaiah chapter 6 that reminds me that the angels there is no wonder that the angels in the presence of God whenever they bow down lift up their heads again and they are still in wonder and awe struck that this God is so awesome and so wonderful. They are thinking, how can you be so forgiving? These people have sinned against you. These people have rebelled against you. God, how are you so wonderful? And why are you so awesome? So they cry out. They have nothing else to say but cry out, holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. Blessed be your name. That is the God that we serve. So even though we may be going through troubles, we may be going through trials, we may be going through tough situations, we need to remember that we serve a God of mercy, and God is merciful all the time. For our reading this morning, we have selected Second uh, Chronicles chapter 30, verse 6 through 9. Second Chronicles chapter 30 verses 6 through 9 and I will read it. It says like this. 
Then the runners went throughout all Israel and Judah with the letters from the king and his leaders and spoke according to the commandment of the king. Children of Israel, return to the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Then he will return to the remnant of you who have escaped from the hand of the kings of Assyria. And do not be like your fathers and your brethren who trespass against the Lord God of their fathers so that he gave them up to desolation as you see. Verse 8 says, now do not be stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourself to the Lord and enter his sanctuary, which he has sanctified forever. Not for one day, not for the Sunday only. Forever he has sanctified it, right? In his presence when you are. And he says, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. And verse 9 says, for if you return to the Lord, your brethren and your children will be treated with compassion by those who lead them captive, so that they may come back to this land, for the Lord your God is, what does it say? For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful, and will not turn his face from you if you return to him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask you that you bless the reading and hearing of the word of God. Bless us this morning. Holy Spirit, speak to each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. The word of God very clearly says that the, the, the king had ordered, the king Hezekiah, after a long time, after King David, there was no Sabbath, uh, the, there was no uh, uh, um, the, the, the Passover observed. And that's what King Hezekiah, when he heard the word of God, when he got, when they picked up the word of God, and he read that, he said, okay, this is what we need to do. And he called, and he is calling all Israel. We know that Israel was divided and the north and the south kingdoms. I'm not going to go into that because time will be very short. And uh, as you all know the background, when he, when he declares, he says, okay, let's call everyone to come, even those kingdoms which are not following us. Let them also come, the other tribes also, the south, the north, everything together we will come and we will observe this Passover. And he sends a message. That, what, that is what the background is. And he says, when the runners went throughout all Israel and Judah with the letters from the king and his leaders because he had sent letters letters those time and you have to think of it is not like an email that you sit on the computer and you shoot an email and while you're on the phone within half a minute that email is with you right unless the, there is some internet problem or something within a couple of minutes and if you have not received in the next five minutes you will call back and you have to resend that right that means something happened and you were not able to send it's not like that they are running from city to city and from place to place and they are declaring and it says very clearly verse 9 for if you return to the Lord your brethren and your children will be treated and the latter part says, for the Lord your God is gracious and merciful. Because people have rebelled, the children of Israel have rebelled right from the time they came out of Egypt. They have already started rebelling before the Red Sea. Before it parted, even they said, why didn't you not leave us in? Egypt itself to die over there. And then they saw the miracles after miracles after miracles, but they always rebel. The word of God is very clearly saying that you are a stiff-necked people. And the word of God, the letter says, do not be stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourself to the Lord. So we know we are talking about a merciful God. This, this morning, when we conclude, we are concluding that God is always going to be merciful. Because the word of God says, his mercy is endured for one day. His mercy is endured for Sunday. His mercy is endured for Monday. No, it doesn't say that. It says his mercy is endured for Ever. His love endures for ever. Psalm 136, if you read, the, every verse repeats that for his mercy endures for ever. He's a merciful God. His mercies are new every morning. And he is the one. He's always going to be merciful. When we meditated on the first week, we looked at Numbers chapter 14, verses 17 through 21, where Moses is saying, God was ready to destroy. He says, move away, Moses. I'm going to destroy these people because they are a stiff neck people. They are rebellious and they have disobeyed not only me, but they are rejecting you. And I'm going to destroy them. Move away. Moses stand in the stood in the gap and he prayed he says lord be merciful because you are merciful and many times we read that word and we think moses was reminding god because it says do not forget that you are a merciful god it is not that god forgot he is merciful moses is reminding himself that god knows he is merciful but i have to be strong in knowing that since god is merciful he is going to still forgive because i'm going to plead on their behalf would that be our portion that we would plead on behalf of many people who do not know the mercy of God, who do not, who still reject, you preach the gospel, you share the love of God, they still reject it. They say, I don't care, I don't do, I don't believe in prayer, I don't do this, all this has happened. And many times you've seen, uh, many years back we were with the 
uh, the, the Dream Center, and we walked up to a gentleman while coming back, uh, distributing some food and uh, sharing the gospel. We came back, and there was one guy who was sitting with his head down and lowly, and we said, can we pray for you? He said, no, no, I don't want prayer. Please stay away. He said, okay, don't worry. I said, it doesn't matter. And we had a big group of like 10, 12 people, and we said, I said, it's okay. I said, but we will pray for you. Whatever your name is, God knows that. You know, immediately that person said, I'm so sorry. Please come and pray. You, they can reject, they can deny, they don't want prayer, it's okay. But you have to have a heart that because your God is merciful, I'm going to continue to pray for mercy for everyone. For those also, because it's very easy to know that when people are evil, when they are, that this, that's what the psalmist was reminding, that do not fret because of evil doers. Do not say that because they are evil, I'm not going to pray for them. If they are, no, you know them, if God has given you an opportunity, you are the one who has received mercy, you better go and pray for mercy for those people also. And that is what God wants us to do, that we be merciful as we have received mercy. We must show mercy also. Amen? And that is what the word of God is saying. So he says, you stiff-necked people. And this, then the second week, we went to Titus chapter 3, verse, th verses 3 through 8. And we saw that even we who, are, who have received the mercy, we were also walking in darkness once, right? In Romans it says... You were dead in your trespasses. In Ephesians it says, once you were dead in your trespasses, Christ Jesus came and brought you from the utter darkness into his marvelous light. So we have to be reminded that we were also walking without mercy and we were also ruthless and we were walking and doing all kinds of evil things. The word of God very clearly points that out. But we need to know that we have also received mercy. So we, I pray that this afternoon as we conclude this message, the, the word of God is there for us to meditate more and more. And I wish we continue to meditate on these messages and the word of God because God's Holy Spirit, God is going to speak to us. Holy Spirit is going to speak to us and minister to us that we who have obtained mercy should continue to pray for those who who do not have mercy because the people will always be this is the old testament we're reading right and it says over there the king hezekiah is sending a message that you do not be stiff-necked like your forefathers turn with me to nehemiah nehemiah chapter 9 verses 17 and 31 we'll read that nehemiah chapter uh, chapter 9 verses 17 and it reads like this they refuse to obey and they were not mindful of your wonders. He's talking about the people who did not con con consider the mercies of God that you did among them. But they hardened their necks and in their rebellion, they appointed a leader and returned to their bondage. But you are God. What does the word say? Ready to. You are a God who is ready to pardon. Gracious and merciful. Slow to anger. Abundant in kindness. And you did not forsake them. We need to know that God who is merciful, even though the people will rebel, people will always be religious, people will always say that there is no God, people will say all kinds of things. You don't change your mindset because of that. That's why it says the word of God that you let your mindset not be on the things of this earth, but on Jesus Christ. Ch uh, Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 says, you are, your life is hidden in Christ. So who should be revealed through, your, through our lives? Only Jesus Christ should be revealed through our lives. In verse 31 of the same chapter, Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 31 says, nevertheless, in your great mercy, you did not utterly consume them, nor forsake them, for you are God, gracious and merciful. See, the word of God is repeatedly telling us, even though the world may say that God is not merciful, God, I don't see the love of God when there is so evil, so much evil, and my things didn't work, because it is based on selfishness. If I didn't succeed, if my things didn't work, my plans did not work, well, I think that a God is not merciful, he's not a God of love. But the word of God repeatedly is telling us, even though we were stiff-necked, even though we were rebellious, God is always merciful and his mercies endure forever. This is what the word of God is teaching us clearly. Let's turn to Second uh, Joel chapter 2, verse 13. And it's telling us that those who are rebellious, even those of us who are saved, we were rebellious ones. Let us not forget that. He says in Joel chapter 2 verse 13, So rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. He's a God, even though he decides, okay, I'm going to destroy you. Someone stands in the gap, God says, okay, I'm going to stay away from that, right? And we see examples after examples that we need to know. He's saying, rend your hearts, not your garments in Hindi. There is a saying, Bes badla kya hua, dil, dil ka badalna chahiye. It doesn't matter whether you rent your garments or rent, tore your clothes or change your clothes. It doesn't matter. Your heart should be 
change. Your heart should be merciful. As you have obtained mercy, you should also show mercy to others because our forefathers were stiff-necked people. And even Stephen, if you turn with me to New Testament, Acts chapter 7, he's talking to the Israelites, to Stephen full of the Holy Spirit. He stood up on that day after the Pentecost and he is standing and he's addressing to them and he is talking about the same people in, St- uh, in Acts chapter... S- I was going to stay in Stephen's chapter 7. Acts chapter 7, it says very clearly, it's Acts chapter 7, if you turn with me to verses 53 onwards, it says like this, you who have received the law by the direction of the angel have not kept, when they, uh, uh, 51 onwards, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. So he's talking to the present generation. Don't ever think that only our forefathers or people who did not know God, people who have experienced the miracles of God, people who have experienced the love of God, people who have received miracles, people who have seen wonderful things, people who have seen the Red Sea parted, people who have seen the, the Jordan stop from the top to the down b- b- bottom, people who have seen the, 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 the walls of Jericho destroyed completely by the power of God, by the name of God itself. They also, they are stiff-necked, but people who have followed them also. They saw that and they are still stiff-necked. That's what he's saying. Verse 51 in Acts chapter 7 verse 51 says, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, of whom you have now become the particles, betray- become the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept it. Even angels have brought the message to you, but you still not. So that's why Paul is saying, even if an angel comes and preaches something apart from the gospel of Jesus Christ, let him be a curse. Any person who preaches wrong from the word of God, let him be a curse. That is the word of God. It says in Romans very clearly, what he is saying is you be truthful to the word of God. And this place is very, very holy place, not just because this is a podium or something, but because you're handling the word of God, you better be careful that you preach from the truth of the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't just make your own stories and do just whatever you want. Once saved, yeah, you can do whatever. Now you have a license to do whatever. No, but by grace you have been saved, not of your works, lest any man should boast. That itself should teach us that it is not by my goodness that I am saved. It is by the grace of God. And I have received and obtained his mercy. I need to be gracious. And I need to be careful in how I share the word of God. My life needs to be an instrument. My life needs to be in the hand of God. So that he can use me as an instrument to glorify his name and his name alone. Because God is gracious and his mercies will endure forever. Turn turn with me to Hosea chapter 2 verse 23. Jesus, God is saying this to his people, those who have rejected him. He says, then I will sow her for myself in the earth and I will have mercy on her who had not obtained mercy. This goes for each one of us also. Then I will say to those who were not my people, you are my people. Hasn't God called us? We were not of his, his, his people. We were not. The chosen one was, was Jewish, uh, Jews. And the, the Romans, Paul is explaining very clear because they did not receive his mercy. So God sent his mercy on the Gentiles so that they may also obtain. That doesn't mean that they have been rejected forever. There is a time coming when God will have mercy again. He has given us an opportunity so that through the mercy that we have obtained, they may see that mercy and come to the Lord. Many are being saved in all over the world. Don't you think that because of the coronavirus, the gospel has been stopped preaching? I believe that more and more gospel is being spread and more and more people are coming to the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord God. It is not because we have suddenly become so so advanced or so good and so big or something and we have become so educational and so smart in our own things that we are preaching. It is the grace of God and His mercy endures forever and He tells us that we must humble ourselves in the mighty hands of in the hands of the mighty God. When we humble ourselves, let no one point fingers and say, oh, see, we do this. And I thank God for everyone who is here. It takes courage to come, actually. In this time of uh, social distancing and pandemic, it takes courage to come. God bless you all. And those of you who cannot come or uh, for some reason or who are not able to come, don't you worry. God is in your midst and God is right there blessing you. You be there where you are in your neighborhoods, in your workplaces where you go and you pray for God's mercies to be renewed, which are renewed every morning and His mercies are new every morning. The Word of God says so. 
and you be faithful and you show mercy as you have obtained mercy. So he's saying, you were not my people. I have called you to be my people. That is what God is saying, that he is a merciful God and he will, not, he will relent from his anger and he will still be merciful. But what there is our role. What do we do in the midst of this? Because when we receive mercy, sometimes we can be, well, I deserved it, right? What did we learn last week? That it, we were not deserving. We were also walking in our own wickedness, in our own ways. God is the one who had, uh, who had mercy on us. And that's why it is so important that we must know that God is merciful and he, we need to be merciful to others. As I said in Psalm 136, let's turn to 136. The whole Psalm we can read and every second por latter portion of that verse, every verse says, for his mercy endures forever. Verse 1 says, oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords for his mercy endures forever. But verse 23, we will come. It says, who remembered us in our low estate. So let no one think that I was so and so and I was righteous and I was the children child of this and I was that. That is always a blessing. You never lose the blessing of being a child of God through your pen, your blessing of the fathers and forefathers. It's all going to be a blessing. But you must remember that every one of us in our low estate, God remembered us. He, he remembered us in our lowly estate and is for his mercy endures forever. That is the word of God. And that's why we need to be careful because when we can be so, it's very easy in our human flesh to be arrogant and think that God was merciful because we did this and we were going to church 10 times and we were praying and we were reading the word of God and I know the Bible. That's all very good and it's going to be a blessing. But you must remember it is his mercy that has saved us and he will continue to be merciful. Turn with me to Romans chapter 11 verse 30. And 31 reminds us that it says very clearly, Romans chapter 11, verse 30. For as you were once disobedient to God, yet have now obtained mercy through their disobedience. This is talking about the Jewish people, right? They were children of God. God said, okay, you go your way. I'm going to have mercy on the Gentiles. And though we are considered as Gentiles, we were not of that, uh, uh, that group. But God had obtained, we have obtained mercy through their disobedience. Even to those, verse 31 say, even to so, these also have now been disobedient that through the mercy shown you, they might also obtain mercy. Many times I've said, oh, they have rejected. They're not coming to. Who told you that they are not coming to the Lord? Your portion is you have received mercy. You continue to pray for them. It is the Lord's doing. If they are repentant, God will have mercy. See, our portion is not to change. We cannot change anyone. Our portion is to pray for them and to continue to have mercy and to show mercy. First Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, it says the same thing. That we were, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, right? We read that all the time and we suddenly are, our chest just flare up, right? Our shoulders are lifted up. Our collars, as they say sometimes, our collars are lifted up. And But the word of God very clearly says, First, chap First Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, it says like this, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. From where he called us? Out of darkness into his marvelous light. Then he says, verse 10, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God who have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So we need to remember that always, that God is always going to be merciful. But we were not, we were those people who had not obtained mercy, but now we are a people who have obtained mercy. So what do we do? We need to show mercy. That's why it says in, uh, um, um, what is that? Uh, Mic Mic Micah. 6, 8, what does it say? He has shown you a man what is good and what the Lord requires of thee, right? To do justly, to walk humbly, and to show mercy. Always be merciful. Since you have received mercy, you need to extend that mercy. Jesus Christ, when he was walking on the face of this earth, what did he say? Turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. And we know that this is known as the Beatitudes or the Sermon on the Mount. And we all read that. Many times we read that. But many times we are not applying that to our life. Matthew chapter 5 verse 7 reads like this. And it says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. What does it tell us? Oh, I have received mercy. I don't care about you. Uh, you I have preached the gospel 10 times. So you never came. I'm not praying for you. God says no. And I, many times I've told you, I used to, I continue to pray for a friend. And some years back I said, 
Paul, I've been preaching to him for almost 25 years. He has not come to the Lord. I think I don't need to pray for him. Holy Spirit reminded me that is not your portion. You will continue to stand in the gap and pray. So maybe our relatives, maybe our loved ones, maybe, our, maybe they have become our enemies. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what their position is today. We have obtained mercy. We will continue to show them. Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy, it says. Uh, chapter 23, he, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and he's saying that you, uh, uh, very clearly, it's, he's addressing to each one of us, woe to you. Uh, chapter 23, verse 23, it says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. <laughs> Many times we think, well, I'm not that. I'm not a hypocrite. I'm not a, a Pharisee. I just read the word of God. Yeah, but if the moment I think that I am better than others, I am a hypocrite, right? Because it's the mercy of God that has saved. So he says further, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected. We do everything. We want to read the word of God. We want to church, attend church. Even though it's not possible, we are sick, we will still come to. And it's a blessing. Don't stop doing that. Never stop doing that. If God is allowing you to come, be strong and come. But <laughs> don't be left out on only those things. I read 10 chapters of the Bible a day. That's very good. Blessed be the name of the Lord God. No way we should be arrogant. It's saying, for you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the various matters of the Lord. What are the various matters? Justice and mercy and faith. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. So Jesus is not saying that you do your tithing and doing all this, stop that. No, he's saying you should have, you keep that, but you should have paid more attention to showing mercy because you have been shown mercy. That is the grace of, that is what the Lord is speaking to us. Turn with me to Luke chapter 6. And it says very clearly in that also, Luke chapter 6 verse 36 reads like this. And the word of God is very, very clear what it's saying. Therefore, be merciful just as your father also is merciful. So many times if we think, I have shown enough mercy. How much mercy has God shown to us? How much mercy does he continue to show to each one of us? See, there is no limit. Someone said that I have forgiven 10 times. Peter asked Jesus, should I for forgive them 7 times 7? That means, right? 7 times, Jesus said 7 times 70. So we say, oh, that is a limit. 490 times. We are good at math, right? 490 times we mark it in our diary. I'm telling you, the Lord, the day the Lord decides I'm going to mark it in my diary, after this, no more grace. <laughs> we will be in a very pitiful condition. He says, be merciful as your heavenly father is merciful. So anytime we think that we have gone over and beyond mercy and beyond forgiveness and beyond this and we have tried every, we made every effort and we have done this and we have done that. No more. I'm not going to deal with it anymore. No. Jesus, God, Jesus is saying, as, as your father is merciful, his God's word is reminding us that we need to be merciful because our heavenly father never stops to be merciful. His mercies endure forever and ever. Romans chapter 12, verse 8. Let's read that. Some of these verses I'm going to just leave as a reminder to each one of us so that we may go back home and read that. And may the Lord, Holy Spirit, continue to minister to each one of us. Romans chapter 8, 12, verse 8. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 8. I'm reading 8, 12. And it says, he who exhorts, this is Paul writing to the church. This is not to outside people. He's talking to the he who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberal, liberality. He who leads with diligence. For everything that we do, he's saying do it with your heart actually. That's the main point. And then he further says, he who shows mercy with what? And cheerfulness. Okay, I'll forgive you. Uh, somehow I'll forgive you. I'll be merciful. That's okay. No. It, the word of God is saying with cheerfulness. It is very tough. It is very tough that you have been preaching to someone 30 years and they haven't come to the Lord and they are still so busy with their own ways and with their own faith. It's very difficult. But God is saying with cheerfulness we need to be merciful, right? We still need to, need to show mercy because God is a God of grace and mercy. First Timothy, he's writing to Timothy also. And it says very clearly, Paul is admonishing because he himself had received the mercy of God. He's writing to Timothy, he says, chapter 1, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 16, it reads, However, for this reason I obtained mercy. Because he says, verse 15, this is a faithful saying, I'm worthy of all acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am. Chief. He's saying, I was a chief sinner. 
However, for this reason, I obtained mercy that in me, first Jesus Christ might show all along, all long suffering or patience as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting. So what are our lives to be? Maybe think like Paul that I obtained mercy so that my life may be merciful to others. So when we read the word, this is why it is so powerful, the word of God. When we read the word of God, many times, when, like Paul says, I have a right to do this. I have a right to do that. I have a right to be upset. Yes, you have a right, but it is not a blessing. The blessing is to humble yourself and as many times as you have to, you still continue to forgive. As many times as you have to, you still continue to show mercy because God is merciful and He is gracious and He is kind and loving and He wants each one of us to be merciful. And that's why he, Paul is saying He was merciful. I was, I'm one of the chief sinners, but I obtained mercy so that when I obtain mercy through my life, they may see that mercy and they may obtain mercy. That same mercy of God. That is what Paul. And in closing, we'll read from James chapter 2, verse 13. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. So if someone thinks I can live without being merciful, it's very clearly, for judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Yeah, we can talk about judgment. But before that comes, we need to show mercy. Amen? That is very powerful and very true because it is from the word of God. So what should our prayer be? Turn with me to Psalm 67 verse 1 as we all stand up in the presence of the mighty God. Word of God very clearly says that we must show mercy because we have obtained mercy. I want to leave us with this prayer. God, Psalm 30, 67 verse 1 says, God be merciful to us and bless us. This is a blessing. This is a benediction people use, right? And cause his face to shine upon us. If that is the prayer that we have when he is merciful, as Jesus said, blessed are those who show mercy. Blessed are the merciful for they shall receive or obtain mercy. This afternoon, I want to spend just a moment or a couple or three to meditate on the word of God. Lord, help me to be merciful. You are a merciful God. Thank you, Lord, for you. I am who I am because of your grace. Lord, help me to be merciful. Lord, I have so many friends, so many people in the family who have not obtained that mercy. Help me never to be arrogant and think that they are away from the mercy of God. Lord, let your word remind me. Open my heart so that I may be merciful, O oh Lord. Yes, judgment is there and it's very easy for me to judge people. But as you said, judge not so that you may not be judged. Judgment is yours, O oh Lord, so I want to surrender my life once again in your hand. I, want, I do not want to go into that judgment area because... Mercy is above judgment, your word says, O Lord. Lord, as you are merciful, O Lord, so help, us, help me to be merciful. I thank you, Lord. And as Paul said, for those of us who are watching, those of you who are watching us through live stream, and if there is any one single person here in this assembly this morning, if you have not obtained mercy, this afternoon is the time to obtain mercy and say, Lord, be merciful to me. And shine your face upon me. As Paul said, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners. As you heard from Dr. Benu earlier also, that it, we are different because God took that. He does not need my sacrifice of sacrificing this and sacrificing that. He needs a surrendered heart. And he said, I will do that sacrifice. He came down to this wretched world to die on the cross for each one of us. He died, he was buried. But powerfully on the third day he rose again from the dead. And he has given us that resurrection life. And he has given us life so that we might be merciful. So if anyone is watching us or everyone hearing us this afternoon. This is the simple word of God. Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners. You may have rejected God from the very birth or from the very age that you had some memory. 
from the very time that you regain consciousness or gain consciousness or knew that you are a living being and you knew about things that are happening. You may have been very rebellious. It does not matter. You have, may have opposed the word of God. You may have burned the word of God. You may have destroyed and uh, you know, done all kinds of wrong thing against people who preach the word of God. It does not matter. And many of us who have known the word of God, we may have continued to reject God. Many of us may have arrogance in our lives. For all of us, we simply need to come and in the, at the feet of Jesus Christ and obtain mercy. This is the prayer I simply would say, and if you want, you can repeat that. Jesus Christ, Lord, I thank you for your word. I have heard that you are a merciful God. I have all these years thought that you are not mercy. You are not a God of mercy. You require this and you require that. But today I've heard that you require nothing but a surrendered heart. So this afternoon I come. I confess of my sins, Jesus Christ. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I need to obtain mercy. Show me mercy. Have mercy on me. In Jesus' name. If that is your prayer, God's mercy is on you, on each one of you. God has given you that salvation. Salvation is free. Grow in the word of God. And have, as you have received mercy, show that mercy on to others. Those of us who are believers, we need to be reminded all the time that we have obtained mercy so that we may shower mercy on others. Heavenly Father, we thank you. What a beautiful privilege you have given us to obtain your mercy. We who were once walking in darkness, we did not know you, Lord. We thank you for you had mercy. Jesus Christ, you came and died for our sins and you have Forgiven our sins and forgiven our sin debt, O Lord. You took that chastisement upon yourself, O Lord. The chastisement for our peace was laid upon you. The judgment was taken or put upon you, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. We thank you for bearing that cross for us. We thank you for dying for us. And Lord, we thank you most of all for that resurrection power in us, Lord. The resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, as we have obtained mercy so that we may show mercy on others, Lord. Help us to continue to pray for others. Help us to continue to stand in the gap, O Lord. Help us always to be reminded that your mercies endure forever. You are a merciful God, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Bless each one of us. Help us to grow stronger in your word, God. Help us, Lord, to be living Christ-like life, Lord. Help us to know that we are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in this world, God. Help us to know that you have called us to be the light of this world, God. And we cannot do that without your grace and mercy. So once again, we surrender our lives this afternoon and we ask you that you continue to shower your mercy upon us. So as we receive mercy, we may shower the mercies on others and continue to pray for the world, God. And reach out to the world with the message of the gospel, the simple message of the gospel of love. Then we thank you and we praise you. In everything we give you glory and honor. We pray for those who are who have to go for mandatory work, so work services, O oh Lord. Whether they are medical staff, the first responders, or the mandatory services, we commit them in your hands. We ask you that you protect them, keep them safe, O oh Lord. Help those who have to go for their jobs, O oh Lord. Help them, O oh Lord. Help us, Lord, who, who can do our jobs from home, O oh Lord, and cover each one of us. Help us to be strong in you. Help us to be still, Lord, the light of the world. Help us, Lord, even though we may be uh, in uh, some areas, we may be locked down or whatever situation we may be. Help us always to have that message of hope for others, Lord. Whether it's over the phone, whether it's through the Zoom meeting, whether it's through the internet, whatever medias you have given us, help us always to have a heart of mercy for others. Continue to pray for them, Lord. We pray for those who are discouraged, sick, Lord. There many are sick, Lord. Touch them in their, uh, Lord, in their bodies, oh God. Send forth your word and heal them in the name of Jesus. There are many who we know have been affected by COVID, oh Lord. We thank you for your grace and mercy, Lord. Your mercies are new, Lord. Your, you died for us, not only for our sins, but you, by your stripes, we are healed as your word says, oh Lord. So we claim those promises promises for these people. Heal them in the name of Jesus. Come perfect healing in the name of Jesus. Help us to be strong in you, Lord. Those who are tired and sick, Lord, and those who are discouraged, heal them in the name of Jesus. If anyone is weak spiritually, lift up, lift them up in, in their faith, oh God. For you are the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ. We thank you and we praise you. Help us to always to look to you. Bless each one. Bless uh, this, us this afternoon, Lord. And dismiss us with your blessing, not from your presence. You lead us and guide us. We thank you and help us, Lord, that our lives be used for the glory of for your and your glory alone, O oh God, help us to show mercy. In the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.